And then off we go. Beautiful. Alrighty, so as usual, guys, feel free to grab yourself any props, cushions, books, blankets, anything that you might need to move through the practice. Particularly at the end or in Shavasana, if your house is quite cool, it might be nice to grab some things to cozy up into. A drink bottle is also quite nice, so feel free to grab one of those as well if you like. We're going to begin the practice today in a comfortable seat. So you can sit on your cushion, you can sit on your book, you can sit on the ground, you can sit cross-legged or kneeling, whatever is going to feel best for your body. Often if you've been kind of sitting in a chair all of the day, it might feel nice to prop yourself up onto something. The body might be feeling a little bit sticky. Just take your time to make yourself nice and comfortable. And if this is super uncomfortable for you, you can always lean up against a wall as well if you have one nearby. Let's just let the hands rest down onto the thighs. And as you close your eyes down, you'll notice that there is a kind of different energetic sensation between placing the palms facing down and turning the palms to face up. So turn them to face down for a moment with eyes closed. Just take a few slow breaths, noticing how it feels. And then in your own time, you can turn the palms to face up. Again, a few slow breaths, just to notice how it feels. And then from there, Make a choice as to what feels best for you today. Palms down, perhaps feels a little more grounding, a little more stable. Palms up can be a gesture of receiving, of surrender, of openness. Whatever you choose, gently roll the shoulders up, back and down to feel a little lift through the center of the chest and through the crown of the head. Let's take a deep inhale breath all together, fill up. And a clearing exhale. And this is likely to be perhaps or perhaps not, the first time you breathed consciously in this way, like really paid attention to your breath and to controlling it and the way that it's moving. So again, with eyes closed down, allow yourself to bring a little bit of awareness inward. Start to slow the breath down, nothing too stressful or straining, just a little slower than normal. Just notice any sensations that are brought up by this slow, gentle, and conscious breath. Yoga, the word yoga literally means to yoke or yoke, union. And it's a nod to this link that the practice provides between our internal and our external experience. So keeping that in mind, as we breathe slowly and deeply here, start to notice the physical sensations that you feel with On the inhale, we might feel the belly expanding, the chest and shoulders rising. And on the exhale, perhaps there's a sense of groundedness, of relaxation. And then as we start to tune in 
just a little closer or to the more subtle sensations. As you breathe in deeply, can you feel the sensation of lightness, the spaciousness, of buoyancy? And as you breathe out, there's a ease and a calm that feels like it's almost blanketing the body. Take a few slow breaths, just really diving into what you feel in your own conscious rhythm of breath. And it's a lot easier to feel what the breath has to offer when we are seated, when we're grounding. It can be a little more challenging when we're moving through the physical postures, but the sensations are still there. So as we move through our practice together this afternoon, I'd love to invite you to really pay attention and to notice and to enjoy the subtle sensations of movement guided by the breath. So that even as things perhaps get a little more challenging or whatever's going on, you've got this slow and steady breath to guide you through, offering lightness, space, ease and calm. Let's just take one more breath in together, fill up. And the clearing exhale. Nice and gently blink the eyes to open. We'll make our way straight into tabletop from here. So take your time removing any props that are underneath you and setting your wrists underneath your shoulders, your knees will stack underneath your hips. You might close the eyes down straight from here or even just soften the gaze a little bit. Try to keep this idea of the felt sensation of our breath. So as you inhale, really dip through the belly, find a little squeeze of the shoulder blades together and draw the chest and heart open. And as you exhale, a rounding through the spine, spread the shoulder blade plates apart through your chin to your chest. Continue to move nice and slow, just like that. And again, it gets a little easier to feel into what's going on in terms of sensation when we close the eyes down or, or even just soften the gaze a little. So if you're comfortable to do so, give yourself that space and breathe really deeply as you move between these two shapes. And just notice what comes up for you, how it feels and how the breath changes slightly when we mix it with movement. Good. Take one more nice big juicy round wherever you're going. And nice and gently, you're looking down at the hands. Can you spread the fingers apart as far as you can? Plug down firmly through all 10 finger pads and then particularly through your index finger and your thumb. So you'll notice you've got a little L shape. We make with index and thumb. You want to press down especially hard there but then also through all 10 finger pads as well. You might notice that this provides a little bit of lightness to the heel of the hand and that's exactly what we're after. From there, press up into the upper back so your shoulder blades spread apart. We're active through our shoulders. Tuck the toes underneath. Draw the navel in towards the spine and lift the knees to hover just an inch off the mat. So we're still gripping into fingertips. We're still pressing into our upper back. We're drawing our belly button in towards our spine. Stay for two more breaths here, nice and active in this shape. One more big breath in. Exhale, down dog, send the hips up and back. And straight away, start to pedal gently through the legs, bending and straightening through one leg at a time. And if you're anything like me, if you've been sitting a lot already today, this is gonna feel pretty juicy to start to pedal and stretch out through the hamstrings. Now, if you feel like the hamstrings are quite sticky and it's shifting quite a lot of weight forward into your wrists, I'd love for you to take a soft or a generous bend in the knees as much as you need to. So that as you find stillness with bent knees, you can press the ground away firmly, drawing the shoulders towards the ears, tilting the tailbone up towards the ceiling. So we're finding a nice long spine. It doesn't matter what's going on with the legs. doesn't matter if the heels are coming anywhere close to the ground. Let's take one more breath in here. One more breath out. 
Nice and gently walk your hands to the back of the mat. Let's meet our feet in forward fold, our Uttanasana. Heel to the feet to hip width apart if they're not there already. And just let the arms kind of hang out here as you draw your gaze towards your knees to lengthen through the back of the neck. Again, we can take as much of a bend in the knees as we like, but I want you to release any tension in the upper body. Let the whole torso hang out here. Finding a little bit of space through the back chain. Let's take one more big breath in. Big breath out. Nice and gently press down through both of your feet. Let's roll to stand. Allow the spine to unravel to stack one vertebrae at a time. At the top, sweep the arms up and overhead. Draw hands down to heart center. And then bring the hands down beside your hips, palms face forward, and what we call Tadasana, our mountain pose. Make sure the feet are hip width apart, so your heels are underneath the hips. I'd like you to look down at your feet, lift up all 10 toes, spread them apart as far as you can, and then gently place them back down to the earth again. Now from here, get a little bit taller through the crown of the head. Either close the eyes down completely, or if that makes you uncomfortable, just soften the gaze a little bit. And begin to shift your weight forward, back, and side to side. Just noticing as you shift the body in these directions, the way that your body kind of catches you or readjusts to find that new center point of gravity. Just feeling into the sense of trust in yourself your body is constantly working out how to support you. Let's just take one more breath in here. One more breath out. Bring the eyes open if you close them. Let's inhale to sweep the arms up and overhead, palms touch. Exhale to fold forward over nice soft knees and back to Uttanasana. Take a halfway lift so we bring our fingertips to our shins and straighten the arms and draw the chest forward. Exhale to fold deeply in half. One more with breath, halfway lift, fingertips come to shins, the shoulders drop forward. Exhale to fold in half. Nice and slowly walk yourself out to your high plank. Shoulders stack above the wrist. If you're feeling feisty, feel free to keep the knees lifted or you can set the knees down and untuck the toes. Press the ground away. So again, we're looking for that lift in our upper back. Our shoulders are spread apart, our fingers are spread wide, and we're gripping into the fingertips like we're trying to grab a hold of our mat. Take a big breath in. Exhale to shift your weight forward. Hug the elbows in and take your time to lower all the way down to the belly. Beautiful. From here, slide the fingertips off the sides of your mat. Tops of the feet are super heavy, setting up for our rolling cobra. Before we lift, can you press the tops of the feet down so firmly you feel the kneecaps lift off the ground? Squeeze your butt on nice and tight, and then squeeze your shoulder blades together gently. From that place of activation, inhale, lift the chest slowly, rolling cobra. Exhale to lower all the way back down to the belly. Let's do that twice more. Inhale, lift up, open up. And exhale to lower all the way down. Last time, inhale, breath, lift up, explore some space. And then exhale to lower all the way back down to the belly. Hands underneath your shoulders. Slide back to Balasana, your child's pose. Knees nice and wide, hips sink down to heels. Fingertips reach forward as we soften the chest down to the earth. And as you feel this groundedness of your hips towards your heels, you might even start to creep the fingertips a little further forward to feel the spine lengthen out. Let's take a full breath in here. Clearing, exhale. Nice and gently shift forward into your tabletop position. Wrists under shoulders and knees underneath your hips. From here, I'd like you to turn the top of the right hand down so the fingertips point back towards the knees. From here, spread the fingers nice and wide and start to straighten into the elbow in your mat. You might not be able to straighten at all, or you might be able to straighten the whole way. Just be really gentle with yourself. And then take two rounds of cat-cow. Inhale, dip the belly, draw the heart forward. 
and exhale to round through the spine, chin to chest. One more, inhale breath, dip the belly, heart forward, and exhale to round through the spine. Beautiful, inhale back to center, unflip the hand, and switch it straight over. Top of the left hand comes down, fingers spread nice and wide, straighten into the arm any amount, remember it doesn't need to be much. Inhale breath, dip the belly, draw the heart forward, and exhale breath, round through the spine, chin to chest. Last time, big breath in, dip the belly, heart draws forward. And then exhale, breath rounding through the spine. Guide yourself back into center from here, unflip the hand. Let's tuck all 10 toes under, everyone's favorite stretch, I know it. And start to walk the hands back towards the knees. Remembering we can keep our hands down to the earth for support. You might even reach back and tuck the pinky toes under as well. If you're feeling like more sensation is good, bring the hands up towards the rest of the thighs, lifting the chest up. Remembering we can bring the hands down to the ground anytime you like. Close the eyes down, draw the shoulders back and down, and take a few slow, steady breaths here. If you're feeling quite comfortable in this shape, you can start to lean a little weight back, which will intensify the stretch through the soles of the feet. Let's take three more big breaths. Relax the shoulders, soften through the jaw. Allow this slow, steady sensation of breath to soothe you in this shape. One more inhale. And one more exhale. Nice and gently coming back onto all fours. Untuck the toes and even maybe gently pat out the tops of the feet. So finding a little bit of release there. From here, I'd like you to walk your knees back just a little. Walk the hands forward just a little. So you can bring your shoulders forward over your wrists into a half plank position. Draw the navel, the belly button in towards the spine. Spread the fingers wide, press into the upper arms. Take a big breath in. Exhale to lower down just halfway. Hug the elbows to the rib cage. Good. Press back up. I'm going to do that twice more. Hug the elbows in, navel to spine, lower down halfway, and then press back up. You got it. Last time. Lower down just halfway, nice and slow, and then press back up. Beautiful. This time, lower all the way down to the belly. Take your time to get there. And let's place the tops of the feet down firmly. Sweep the arms back behind you. Our palms will face down. Our thumbs will point out. Tops of the feet ground down, once again, so firmly the kneecaps lift. Draw your shoulders back a little and squeeze the shoulder blades together. From here, inhale breath, lift the chest, reach the arms back, squeeze the shoulder blades, and exhale to soften down to the belly. Twice more, inhale breath, lift up, chest up, arms up. Exhale to lower down, maybe this time the legs come up as well. Inhale, chest up, arms up, maybe legs up too. Exhale, lower down to the belly, beautiful. From here, gently place the hands underneath your shoulders. Stay on your belly, but climb up onto your forearms into Sphinx Pose. So elbows stack under shoulders, fingers spread nice and wide. Tops of the feet press down firmly, by gripping into fingertips to draw the chest and heart space forward. Draw the belly in towards your spine, soften the shoulders away from your ears. And if you feel like you'd like a little more space, turn the hands out to the corners of your mat, press into the palms and begin to straighten the arms any amount. Squeeze the glutes on the butt cheeks, especially if you're coming to this variation or stay down on the forearms. Let's take one more breath in. One more breath out. Nice and gently lower down to the belly. So you can place your hands underneath your shoulders. Slide back into Balasana, child's pose. Pausing there for as long as you like. And then meeting in downward facing dog as you're ready. Mm. And you might even keep the eyes closed down for as much of the practice as you can. Keeping this idea of moving from that internal space and really feeling what the practice has to offer on a more subtle level. Let's take one more breath in here. One more breath out. 
Inhale to three-legged dog. Send the right leg nice and high. Draw the navel in towards the spine. And then come high onto the tippy toes of the left foot. Take a big breath in. Exhale, knee to your nose. Press the ground away. Hug it in nice and close. Inhale, three-legged dog. Send the leg up and back. This time, right knee to right elbow. So you can step your foot just outside of the right hand. Lower the back knee down and find our open lizard lunge. So we're flexing our right toes firmly, yawning onto the knife edge blade of the foot, keeping the right toes tight and flexed towards the knee so our ankles stay strong. And then make the choice to stay on palms or guide the right hand to the right thigh. Good. Two more steady breaths here. You might take a quad stretch if you've been practicing that one, bending into the back knee and either holding it there or reaching for the foot. One more big breath in, big breath out. Nice and gently, guide the right knee back into center. Let's land both hands down here. We'll tuck our back toes under, lift up our back knee, round our back foot down, and start to bend into our back leg as we straighten into our right. I'm going to turn around to face you, just so it's a little more clear. So our left knee, our back knee is bent, and our right leg is straight. Our hands are on the ground to keep us supported here. It's kind of like a half squat with a deep opening through the extended side. Take a big breath in here. Exhale, switch it to the other side. So we're gonna walk our hands through the middle. This time the right knee bends and the left leg straightens. Starting to explore a little bit of space on the inner seam of the thigh. One more breath in. Take it back to the back of the mat and then pause there. From here, we can find a little bit of a twist. We're gonna keep our right fingertips down onto the ground and peel our left fingertips open towards the ceiling. If that doesn't feel great in your body, you can keep both hands down. Let's just take one more breath in, and one more breath out. Nice and slowly walk yourself back up to the top of the mat. Hands will frame our right foot, our front foot, as we lower our back knee down. Inhale, breath will sweep the arms up, and overhead to find Anjaneyasana, our low lunge. Good. Now in this shape, soften the shoulders a little bit, hug the front heel to the back knee, and then start to sink a little deeper, finding some space through the front of the left hip. Solid, shoulders will soften down, and you might even start to lift the gaze a little bit here. Take a full inhale breath. Exhale, slowly straighten the front leg, finding your half splits. And this one might feel nice to grab your book or your block, placing it underneath one or both of your hands. And remembering we can keep as much of a bend in the front knee as we like. Head and neck will relax and release. Take a full inhale breath. And a full exhale. Good, just two more breaths here. Notice how with each exhale that you take, you can soften a little deeper. One more breath in, and one more breath out. Beautiful, nice and gently pop your props to one side. Rebend into the front knee to sweep the arms up and overhead, inhale. And then exhale, hands to heart center. So our palms touch in the middle. We inhale to lean forward. Exhale to place the left elbow to the outside of the right thigh. Now press into the palms really gently to begin with. I'd like you to try and lengthen your spine as much as possible. So you're trying to grow as tall as you can. And then exhale to press into the palms and twist a little deeper. Two more breaths like that, a really lovely assisted twist. Big breath in to lengthen, big breath out to twist. One more inhale and one more exhale. Carefully from here, release both hands down to the mat. Tuck the back toes under, pick up the back knee. Round both hands down super firmly and step to high plank. Shoulders stack above the wrists. Again, remember we can keep the knees lifted or lower them down and untuck the toes. Take an inhale to shift forward. Exhale, hug the elbows in, lower all the way down to the belly. 
This time I'd like you to slide your thumbs back in line with your low ribs. Hug the elbows towards each other, squeeze the shoulder blades together, and then inhale, press gently into the palms to lengthen into low cobra. Exhale, lower all the way back down, good. Just one more time, inhale, breath, press into the tops of the feet, lift up, and then exhale, lower as you are back down to the belly, good. Down dog is where we'll meet from here. So you can either press back through your child's pose, or if you're feeling fiery, you might choose to press through a full or half plank by hugging the elbows in, tucking the toes underneath, drawing the belly to the spine, and then doing your best to press up and send it back to your downward facing dog. Whatever you choose, however you choose to get there, that's where we'll meet as you're ready. Spreading the fingers wide and inviting in a deep inhale breath. And a clearing exhale. Nice and gently inhale, left leg lift, send it nice and high. Come as high as you can to the ball of the right foot. Press the ground away firmly, take a big inhale to lengthen. Exhale draws your knee to your nose, press the ground away, draw the navel to the spine. Inhale to send it up and back, three legged dog. Left knee taps the left upper arm to step our left foot outside of our left hand. Remember it's a big step, so if it doesn't quite get there, shuffle the foot into place, and then lower the back knee down. Open lizard lunge, we're gonna flex our left toes super firmly, yawn onto the knife edge blade of the left foot. Left hand can find the left thigh, or you can keep both hands down to the ground. Just feel into how the hips feel today, and how you'd like to open up a little bit of space. You might feel stickier than the other side, or perhaps you're taking that quad stretch variation, reaching the left hand back for the foot. Wherever you choose to go, take one more big breath in, and a big breath out. Nice and gently, guiding yourself back onto your palms, ground the left foot down. Let's tuck our back toes under, pick up our back knee, and ground our back foot down. From here, the hands walk to the back of the mat, bending into our right knee and straightening into our left. This is our supported skandhasana. Now, if with the right foot, sorry, the left foot, the one that's in front, we want to be on the heel of the foot, flexing the toes so the big toe points to the ceiling. But if that doesn't feel great in your body, feel free to keep the foot grounded down to the earth. You can feel into it here. Take a big breath in. Exhale, switch it to the front of the mat. Left knee bends, right leg straightens, using the hands for support. One more breath in. Exhale, switch it to the back. Bending into the right knee, straightening into the left. And then remembering here, you can either stay as you are, or you might find that twist. Left hand down this time, right fingertips peel open. Big inhale breath. Big exhale. Both hands to the mat. Let's walk ourselves back to the top of the mat. Hands will frame our left foot. Spin onto the ball of the back foot to lower the back knee down. And then sweep the arms up and overhead into Anjaneyasana, our low lunge. So nothing too fancy with the arms for this variation. We're just working on hugging the front heel to the back knee, drawing the belly in. Reaching strongly through fingertips, but softening through the shoulders. So as we start to sink a little deeper, we can squeeze our right butt cheek on and open more deeply through the front of the right hip. Let's take one more breath in. One more breath out. Nice and gently, straighten into the front leg to find your half splits. Fingertips can either find the ground, you might place the hands on props. You can even sweep the arms back behind you, squeezing the shoulder blades together if you like, to develop a little bit of strength in the back body. But make this yours, remembering you can keep as much of a bend in the front knee as you like, and that perhaps the tuck of the back toes might help a little with balance. Let's just take one more breath in. One more breath out. 
Back to low lunge. Rebend into the front knee. Sweep the arms up and overhead. Get nice and tall through the spine. And then gently bring your hands to heart center here. So palms touch, shoulders back and down. Let's inhale to lean forward. Exhale to hook the right elbow outside of the left thigh. So remembering here, we're trying to hook as deep as we can, but trying not to flex or to round through the spine. What I'd like you to do, once you get your elbow hooked over the thigh, see if you can lengthen through the crown of your head towards the top of the mat, like you're trying to create a long spine as much as possible. And then exhale to press into the palms. From that place of length, we can twist a little deeper. Good. One more big breath in. Big breath out. Nice and gently releasing both hands down to the mat. Let's tuck our back toes under. Pick up our back knee. Press the ground away firmly to step to high plank. Shoulders stack above the wrist, pressing the ground away. Remember your choice to so lift the knees or lower them down. Inhale, lean forward. Exhale, hug the elbows in. Lower all the way down to the belly. Good. So from here, yogis, I'd like you to slide your thumbs back in line with your low ribs. So if you look back, your elbows are stacked above your wrists. Hug the inner thighs towards each other. Hug the elbows towards each other. Press the tops of the feet down firmly with the option of coming into cobra again. Pressing into the palms to lift up or your upward facing dog. If it's up dog, your arms go straight, your thighs lift up, just the tops of the feet are down. Let's all take one more breath in. Exhale to lower back down to the belly, nice and slow. Good. Press back to Balasana, child's pose, hips to heels, to downward facing dog. We tuck the toes, lift the knees, and send the hips up and back. You might take a little pedal through the legs here. Remembering we're spreading the fingers nice and wide, pressing the ground away, beautiful. Big inhale breath. And a steady exhale. Good, inhale, send the right leg nice and high, three-legged dog. Kick through the heel super firmly here. And then this time, let's bend the knee, stack and open through the hip. So it's like you're trying to point the knee towards the ceiling and hug your heel in as close towards you as you can. Take a big breath in, big breath out. Come high into the tippy toes of the back foot. Inhale, exhale, right knee taps the right elbow, draw it in nice and high. And then inhale, send it up and back three-legged dog. This time, right knee to right elbow. Hold it there and step the foot just outside of the hand, just like we did before. This time, the back knee will stay lifted and we want to stay hugging the front knee towards the upper arm. I'd like you to come onto fingertips here, so a little lift off the ground, or you're placing something underneath the hands if the hamstrings are feeling a little sticky. Think about cat cow. I'd like you to inhale. Drop the hips a little, draw the shoulders back, shine the heart forward, and then exhale. Start to straighten the front leg any amount, rounding through the upper back. Twice more with breath. Inhale, we re-bend the front knee, sink the hips, draw the heart forward, and then exhale, straightens through the front leg. One more time, big breath in, and big breath out. Beautiful. From here, I'd like you to re-bend back into your front knee. Pop any props off to one side. Look forward and step your left foot outside of your left hand, preparing for our yogi squat. So you might keep the hips on the ground as you lower down any amount. Our hips will lower down. Maybe hands come to heart center. Or if this feels super inaccessible for you, know that you can lift the heels up off the ground as well, or just sit the hips a little higher. Take a few breaths, making sure we're guiding the knees out in line with the toes. And if you've got the hips down fairly low here, I'd like you to press your elbows into the inner thighs and lengthen out through the spine. Good, big breath in. Big breath out. Let's take one more inhale. 
One more exhale. Nice and gently, both hands down to the mat. Take your time to lift the hips up into a forward fold and to heel toe your feet to hip width apart. From here, I'd like you to bend gently into your left leg, plant the left fingertips underneath the face and peel the right hand open towards the ceiling. If the ground again feels like a little, a little bit far away, you can place a drink bottle, a block, whatever you need underneath the left hand to make it a little more accessible. Take a big breath in. And then exhale and switch it over. Bend into the right knee, right hand down to the earth or your prop as the left fingertips reach open towards the ceiling. We want to start to straighten into the left leg any amount, looking for a little more openness and a gentle rotation. One more breath in. Exhale to lower all the way down to the ground. Release any props, pop them off to one side. Press the ground away and rise to stand. Reach up, look up, guide the palms to touch. Pause here. I'd like you to grab a hold of your left wrist with your right hand. Take an inhale, grow a little taller. Exhale, lean over to the right hand side. Belly draws in, one more breath in. One more breath out. Inhale back through center and switch it over. Left hand grabs right wrist and then exhale, lean to the left, hips to the right. Take a big breath in and a big breath out. Inhale takes you back through center. Release any grip and guide the hands to heart. Beautiful. From here, let's shift our weight gently into our right foot. The left knee draws up and in towards your chest. Good. Set your gaze forward at a point straight ahead that's not moving. Take a breath in. Exhale, draw the left knee out to the left hand side. So drawing the leg out, keeping the hips and chest square to the front. Inhale, draw it back to center. Good, let's do that once more. Draw it out to the left. Hold there, squeeze your butt, belly in and then back to center, good. Hold there, knee to chest, take a big inhale breath. Slowly step all the way back to your high lunge. You can take your time. We're hinging from the hip, we're stepping our left foot all the way to the back of the mat. It might be a little wobbly, feel free to grab along anything you need for support. And then look down at the feet, make sure they're about hip width apart. From there, reach the arms up and overhead to find our crescent lunge. Shoulders are soft, belly draws in. Take a big inhale to grow a little taller. And then exhale, sink down into the strength of the legs. Good. Let's take one more big breath in here. And a big breath out. Warrior two. Ground the back foot down. Open out through the arms. Making sure our front knee draws in line with the pinky toe. Take a big breath in. Exhale, sink down into the legs, you've got this. One more inhale breath. And one more exhale. Inhale, flip the front palm. Start to straighten your front leg. Bring the back hand to the back thigh lightly and reach the top hand up and overhead into our reverse triangle. A nice big side stretch. Take a full inhale. Exhale, keep both legs straight and bring your arms back to a T-shape with the body, parallel to the earth. Heel toe the back foot in a little, so shorten your stance a tiny bit as we make our way into Trikonasana, triangle pose. Now, if you're unsure about the setup for this shape, make sure all five toes of the front foot are pointing forward, and then the back foot is turning in slightly, so it's turning forward about 35 degrees. From here, both legs are strong and straight. We start to shift the hips back as we draw our right hip bone towards our right thigh. Try not to bend through the side waist. We're trying to keep our waist and our spine as long and straight as possible. When you can't go any further, bring the right hand down to a block, a drink bottle, anything you like, or even to the inside of your shin. Left fingertips will reach up towards the ceiling. Now we shouldn't be putting too much weight in the bottom hand. Can you draw your navel in towards your spine to support your low back? And feel the sensation of trying to hug your heels towards each other, trying to draw the inner thighs in and up. 
Let's take one more big breath in here. Big breath out. Inhale nice and gently back through center, reverse triangle, reach up and back. And then exhale to windmill both hands down. We frame the front foot and spin onto the ball of the back foot. So we're high on the ball of the back foot. Our hands are landing down, framing our front foot. Left hand down, right fingertips open, the simple twist. Good. Hug in the front knee. It's going to want to swing out to the right. Can you keep it stacked over the ankle? And invite in just one more big inhale breath. And a big exhale. Right hand comes down to frame our right foot. Let's look forward and slowly step up to the top of the mat. You've got it. Left foot meets our right. Take a halfway lift, bring the chest to parallel, draw the shoulders back, and exhale to fold in nice and deep. Inhale, rise to stand, reach up, look up, guide the palms to touch, and exhale, draw the hands to heart center. Cool. So from here, once again, shift your weight into your right foot and slowly draw your left knee up and in towards your chest. Take a breath in. Exhale, draw the left knee out to the left and then find your tree pose. You can either bring the heel to the inside of the calf or you might use your hand to place the foot to the inner seam of the standing leg. Make sure you've got the foot either above or below the knee joint. So never pressing on the knee itself. From there, set your gaze, what yogis call a drishti, a focal point straight ahead that's not moving and begin to extend the arms up and overhead. Good, lengthening through the spine, growing tall through the crown of the head. You might notice any little wobbles through your standing leg. You might fall out and if you do, reset, jump back in. Find a focus for two more breaths here, you got it. One more breath in and one more breath out. Now, just as slowly as we came in, we come out. Bring the hands to heart center. Gently guide the left knee up and in towards your chest. And then slowly land the foot down. Beautiful. Shoulders draw back and down. Inhale, breath, reach the arms up and overhead. Exhale to fold forward, back to your forward fold. Inhale, half lift, fingertips to shins, bring your chest to parallel. Exhale, fold deeply in half, good. Plant the hands, step back to high plank. Your option is to move through a flow with me, or if you're feeling a little tired or a little smoked, step back to down dog. If you wanna take full flow, let's lower our knees down together, finding a half plank position. Shoulders above wrist, navel into spine. Shift forward, hug the elbows in, lower down just until you feel your elbows touch your ribcage, hold there, and then draw the chest forward, straighten the arms, upward facing dog. Press into the tops of the feet so the thighs lift off the ground. Take a big breath in. Exhale, press into the palms, press to the tops of the feet to pipe the hips up and back. Untucking the toes to find downward facing dog. Amazing, big breath in. Big breath out. Final side, left leg lift, send it up and back, three-legged dog. Again, here, let's bend the knee, stack and open the hip. So try and point the knee to the ceiling as high as you can by squeezing your left butt cheek. As you hug, the left heel in towards you tightly. Come high onto the ball of the right foot, take a breath in. Left knee, left elbow, shift forward so your shoulders are above your wrists. Inhale to send it up and back, three-legged dog. Left knee to left elbow, pausing there to step the foot just outside of the left hand. Remembering if our hamstrings are sticky, you might like to grab yourself a block, a book, a prop, anything to place underneath the hands to bring the ground a little closer. Take an inhale breath, sink the hips down. Keep the back leg strong. You should feel an opening through the front of the right hip. Shoulders draw back, heart lifts. Exhale, start to straighten the front leg, any amount. Good, twice more, inhale breath. Lower down the hips, so flossing out. 
And then exhale to send it back, lengthening through the front hamstring any amount. Last time, big breath in. And a big breath out, send it back. Good. Rebend into the front knee. Pop your props off to one side and step up to find yogi squat. So our right foot steps up outside of our right hand. Remembering as you lower the hips, the heels can lift up. You can sit up into a higher squat. Or for a little bit of support here, you might grab a hold of the top of your mat with both hands. So as you sit the hips back and down, you're holding onto the mat to stop from leaning back or hands can find heart center. I need to turn my heels quite far in and my toes quite, quite far out to find the shape. So don't worry if you've got quite a duck footed stance, that's fine. And then press into the palms to lengthen the spine. Let's take one more breath in. One more breath out. Gently fingertips to the earth, we fold forward, straightening out through the legs. Heel toeing the feet to hip width apart. Take a halfway lift to lengthen. And exhale to fold in deeply. Inhale, rise to stand, reach up, look up, guide the palms to touch. Exhale, hands to heart center. So from here, shift your weight gently into your left foot. Right knee draws towards the chest. Good, take a big breath in. Exhale to draw the knee out to the left. Try and keep your hips and shoulders square. Inhale, back through center. Just one more time. Exhale, draw it out to the left. And then inhale, back through center, good. From here, hold the knee up, take a breath in. Exhale, a slow step all the way back. Take a bend into the standing knee to help you control. Right foot lands to the back of the mat. You might bring the hands to the hips so you can check out the feet. Make sure they're about hip width apart. From there, arms reach up and overhead. Our right butt cheek is squeezing. Our tailbone is pointing down as we draw our lower ribs towards our hips. Big inhale breath. Sink deep down into your lunge on your exhale. Good, one more breath in. Exhale, warrior two. Ground the back foot down, open out through the arms. Shoulders draw back and down. And here, there's going to be a temptation to let the front knee drop inwards. Can you press the knee to the left, like you're drawing it in the direction of the pinky toe, and then squeeze your butt to hold it in place. Take one more breath in. One more breath out. Inhale, flip the front palm, straighten your front leg. Right hand to right thigh, left fingertips travel up and back, reverse triangle. Guiding us back to center to a T-shape with the arm for triangle pose. So it is a nice idea to shorten your stance just a little and then make sure the back toes are pointing inwards slightly, about 35 degrees. Front toes point straight ahead. There's a gentle turn of the hips. So your hips don't need to be square to the side of your mat. Your hips should be pointing in the same direction as the back foot. From there, lean forward, Slide the hips back, draw the belly in towards the spine and guide your left hand down to a block, to a prop or to the inside of your calf, reaching the top fingertips up. Good. And take a couple of slow breaths here. And you might even close the eyes down, tap back into that experience. Lightness as you breathe in and softness as you breathe out. Let's take one more breath in and one more breath out. Use the strength in your belly, reverse triangle. Press down to lift up and back, nice big side stretch. To windmill, both hands back down to the ground. Frame your front foot and spin onto the ball of your back foot. So front knee over ankle, we're high on the ball of the back foot. Right hand down, left hand up for our simple twist or easy twist. We're drawing the belly in. We're rotating from the upper back. Take one more breath in. One more breath out. Nice and gently, left hand lands down to frame the front foot. Look forward, slowly step to the top of the mat. Right foot meets left. 
Take a halfway lift, draw the shoulders back, draw the belly in. Exhale, fold too deeply. Inhale, rise to stand, press the ground away, reach up, look up, palms touch. Exhale, hands to heart center. So let's finish off with tree on the second side. You're shifting your weight into your left foot, hands to heart center as we draw the right knee towards the chest. Use the strength in the leg to first guide it out towards the left. Yes, no, what am I doing? Left foot, to the right, to the right. <laughs> and then make your choice for your tree. You're either placing the foot down to the inside of the calf or you might use the hand to guide it into place. Now it really doesn't matter where you go, just make sure it's above or below the knee joint itself. Hands to heart center. And then start to reach the arms up and overhead. Good. You can either keep the arms as they are, you can bring the palms to touch overhead. You can find chin mudra with the hands, which is bringing the thumb and index finger to touch. It's supposed to be a lovely and balancing mudra, which is nice when we're balancing on one leg. And let's take two more breaths here. One more breath in, one more breath out. Nice and gently, hands to heart center, right knee draws up and in towards the chest, and then softly place it down. Beautiful yogis. Give yourself a moment here, nice tall spine, shoulders back and down. Let's take a deep, unifying breath in, and a clearing exhale. Inhale to sweep the arms up and overhead nice and high. Exhale to fold forward over soft knees. Take a halfway lift, one last halfway lift to draw the chest forward, draw the shoulders back. Exhale to fold in deeply. Nice and gently plant the hands. I'd like you to step back to a high plank position and lower all the way to the belly, either knees lifted or knees lowered down. Right. Doesn't matter how you get there, as you arrive, we're going to make our way into a shoulder stretch. So if you're not sure, imagine that I'm on my belly rather than a wall, or imagine I'm a gecko. <laughs> Either way. So on your belly, you're going to extend your right arm out in line with your shoulder, the palm will face down. So it's literally out from the shoulder joint in line with the shoulder, palm facing down. From here, we put our left hand underneath our left shoulder. We're gonna press into the left hand to roll onto our right side, any amount, stretching through the right shoulder. Now, try to relax the head and neck down to the ground. If it feels like the ground is a little far away, you can place a cushion or book underneath the head. And in terms of the legs, you can step your left foot up and behind the right knee or for something a little more gentle, bend both of your knees and hug them in towards your chest, stacking one leg on top of the other. So all we're looking to do is find a nice juicy stretch through the front of the shoulder, and it can be as intense or as soft as you like. So if it feels a little too strong, use the left hand to support you as you come out in your mat. Beautiful, guys. Deep breath in. Big breath out. Take two more breaths here. One more inhale. And one more exhale. Nice and gently, you'll guide yourself back onto your belly. And we literally just come straight into the other side. So this time the left arm extends out long in line with the shoulder, palm down. Your right hand underneath the right shoulder will roll you onto your right side, your left side, sorry, any amount. The right hand can stay there to support you. The head can lift or we can relax it down. Any shape with the legs that feels supportive is gonna be perfect. And just take a couple of breaths there to open it through the chest. This might feel quite juicy if you found yourself sitting maybe at a computer or in a chair for a lot of the day. Good, two more big breaths here. 
One more breath in and one more breath out. Nice and gently roll yourself onto your belly, releasing your shoulder stretch. And from here, we'll simply flip ourselves straight onto our back. Take your time to get there, no rush at all. But as you arrive, hug the knees in towards your chest, give yourself a little cuddle and a little squeeze. And then we'll find our way into a stretch. Let the left foot land down to the earth. Kick the right heel up towards the ceiling, straightening into the leg any amount, doesn't matter how much. Grab a hold of the back of the right thigh and start to draw some nice big circles through the ankle. Good, taking it one way, taking it the other. Let's take one more big inhale breath. Exhale, right ankle to left thigh, finding our quad, sorry, our glute stretch and our hip stretch, our figure four. So pressing the right thigh forward, you can stay there. We'll thread the hands through, finding a grip on the back of the left thigh or the front of the shin. Shoulders relax back and down, tailbone grounds. Maybe a gentle rock from side to side. Good, let's take one more big breath in. Big exhale. Nice and gently release, just switch it straight over. Right foot down. Kick the left heel up towards the ceiling, straighten the leg any amount, and draw some nice big circles through the ankle. Taking it one way, taking it the other. And then gently to your figure four on the other side. Left ankle to the top of the right thigh, square the hips off. Either pause there or thread the hands through to draw back. And again, maybe a gentle rock from side to side. Okay, let's take one more big inhale breath. And a slow exhale. Nice and gently back through center. Hug both knees to your chest, take one final squeeze. And then soften down into Shavasana. Let the legs extend nice and long. Let the arms extend nice and wide. Or if you prefer to take your final few minutes or moments, I should say, in a comfortable seat, please feel free to join me there. Otherwise, get nice and comfy. Close the eyes down. Take a big inhale breath. And a clearing exhale. And as we offer ourselves our last few minutes or moments of stillness here, with the eyes closed down and our gaze drawn inward, we can start to dive back into this lovely felt sensation of our breath. We feel the physical body, the heaviness, the groundedness, the stability. And we feel a lightness and spaciousness that's invited in with each and every breath that we take. So just like we did at the very beginning of the practice together, just take a few slow, steady breaths here. And just allow yourself to really feel into and notice what it is that you feel here.
Releasing any control over the breath, let's invite in a deep inhale. And a clearing exhale. And start to bring a gentle roll of the head from side to side. If you're in a seat, let the chin drop to the chest, gently roll the neck. And if you're on your back, gently guide the back of the head from side to side. Take it real slow, wherever you are. Eventually, you'll bring in other small movements, a little wiggle through fingers, or a little wiggle through toes. And eventually, a nice big stretch, reaching up and overhead. Waking up gently through the body. In no rush at all to get there. Join me up in a comfortable seat as you're ready, either rolling off to one side and pressing up gently or rocking up and down the spine, whatever feels nicest. The eyes close down or soften the gaze as you get there and guide your hands to heart center once again. Final time for the practice. Palms will touch in Anjali Mudra. Taking a deep and unifying breath in and a clearing exhale. Gently bowing chin to chest. We seal our practice by saying to each other, Namaste. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, you guys. I hope you're feeling good.